Good morning. Welcome to the Adventure Closet. I'm Liz and this is Charlie. We are two 80s and 90s kids that never lost their sense of wonder. We're all over the map, exploring wild and abandoned places, discovering rocks, geology, and history of different areas, all while living and traveling in our minivan Opal. I guess you can say our life is a mixtape of adventures. So hop in the van, hit the subscribe button, and let's go somewhere. Good morning. We are leaving this beautiful site here in, uh, it's next to Sterling Silver, or Sterling Silver, Sterling, Sterling City, Texas. And uh, I just came out to do our once over to make sure that we weren't leaving anything behind like I normally do. And I saw this poop, which I'm going to show you poop. So if you don't like poop, uh, skip ahead like 15, 20 seconds. Um, so I found this poop. Which is very fresh. And um, oh, there's some military helicopters flying by over here. So the poop is very fresh and we're trying to determine, is it skunk poop or is it pig poop? Because Liz's mom has told us to watch out for pigs here. I'm gonna show you the helicopters again. Those are Apaches. About four of them. Uh, yeah, so Liz's mom has told us to watch out for pigs, which, you know, we're careful. And uh, last night when I got out to go to the bathroom, I did smell a skunk. So I'm thinking that it was skunk poop, but we're not entirely sure. Liz thinks it might be pig poop. I think it might be skunk poop. <clears throat> so. Help us decide. Was that pig or skunk? <laughs> That's what we have you guys for. To help us out. All right, on to more oil rigs and, or oil pumping and uh, hopefully something else because it's all we've seen in Texas so far, oil pumping. <laughs> we'll find stuff, I'm sure. So this cemetery is the remnants of the town of Montvale. Uh, the town was established in 1888 and the cemetery is all that remains of it. Uh, Montvale was named after one of the hills around the area. Uh, it is legend. It might be the one across the road too. Uh, so it's a it's a legend that Montvale was named after one of the hills in the area, although none of these hills really have names. So, just a little tidbit, here's a couple more of the graves. Nothing hardly left of this one. It's a Woodman of the World Memorial. Private Vonnie V. Fulcher, June 29th, 1896 to October 9th, 1918. Not thy will, but thine be done. That is a very beautiful one. This is your gravestone. Henry Davis and Callie Davis. But the only thing that matters is that. That don't matter, that don't matter. That's what matters. 
because that is your life. This is everything you've done, every breath you've taken, every heartbeat, everything. Right there. Just think about that for a second. Our graves mark our, our birth and our death. And our entire life is represented by a hyphen. I died 1809 or 1802. Boy, it sure looks like it. It does. Because it's showing the born 18 something. Oh, one. 1801 and died 1802. Aw, little baby Eddie. That, this can't be 1802 because this town was established in 1888. I wonder if that backward C means something. Because it's not exactly a, a zero. They're both backward C's. Uh, maybe the nine, the arm of the nine goes down far or something? Yeah. Maybe it was 18, a misprint. Yeah, 1891 to 1892. Still yeah. very old. I think that's one of the oldest headstones I've seen. Yeah. At least in recent times. Yeah. 1899. 1899? Yeah. Are both nines weird? Uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of youngins. Another one year old. Uh, then who knows how old these two are. Probably some of the originals. It's around this uh, planter box here. And there's some new ones mixed in with the old ones. This is right off the highway uh, near um, Sterling City, where we, we camped right over there by the Bodka Wash. It's kind of nice going to, uh, to old graveyards because, I mean, it's, it's history and um, this may be the last time somebody says Ben G. Fint, his name. That might be the last time his name has ever been spoken. So it, it's kind of nice to go to old graves and read off their names for them and just at least give them that last little, you know, they were someone. These are all people's brothers, sisters, daughters, sons, children, parents. I mean, yeah. Walter Holloway, James Holloway. Died in 1896, 1896. Uh, Virginia Holloway. Born in 1886, died in 1897. Yeah, it's kind of a shame. Kind of a shame that people didn't get to live as long back then. This one is so beautiful. Rosa. Wife of J.G. Davis, born August 7th, 1875, died October 9th, 1897. And it says below, none knew her but to love her, none named her but to praise her. Her happy soul has winged, wait, oh, her happy soul has winged its way to one pure bright eternal day. Apparently prickly pears are edible. Going to try to eat one, I think. 
the fruits have little thorns on them, which Liz figured out the hard way. And apparently is still figuring out the hard way. Oh. This sucks. But I want to eat one. Because it appears to be right. So it says first you cut the ends off. Oh, it's beautiful. And then make a, a slit long ways. And then peel the skin off. Okay. And the seeds are edible if you like to eat seeds. Wow. So you just bite it edible. into it? Sure. Okay. The fruit tastes really good. The seeds are hard. I'm not gonna eat the seeds. But that's actually really delicious. It's like not super sweet, but like almost like a water, like a tropical watermelon. They is the only a, way I can describe it. They said a mix between natural bubblegum and watermelon. Oh, yeah. I could see that. We just ate a cactus fruit out of a cemetery. <laughs> yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. not bad. Mm -hmm. We are probably a lot out of season. No, I'd say it's perfect. But yeah. That, you gotta spit the seeds out though. It's not bad. I'm not mm -hmm. having more, but it's not bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one of the weirder things we've done. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to give a disclaimer that before eating any wild plants, uh, make sure you do your research. Don't count on us. I could just keel over and croak after this video and you wouldn't know it. So <laughs> enter at your own risk if you're going to collect wild edibles. My mom, bless her heart, she uh, she worries about us being on the road and uh, you know she Charlie mentioned earlier about how she warned us about the, the wild pigs here in Texas so we looked it up you know doing our research and apparently there is a huge issue with um, feral pigs in Texas um, they're um, actually kind of taking over and they're evolving there's the uh, skulls are getting thicker, uh, it's harder to kill them, they're super smart, uh, so they're kind of evading hunters, but it's like open season for wild pigs all year long for hunters here. Um, they want the hunters to get them and reduce the population. Um, they, as far as being afraid of them, um, yeah, they're they're pretty big animals. Um, the feral pigs can, are smaller than domestic. They range between 150 and 200 pounds, but they can get on up to 400 pounds. Um, and so they can seriously injure you. Um, the reality, and I don't know if this statistic is true or not, but Google told me, so I'm gonna relay this to you. Do with it as you want. But um, there's been 100 incidents with feral pigs since the 1800s and only four of them resulted in death. Um, the story that my mom told me uh, was a woman, uh, she was like a caretaker or something and she was going to take care of this elderly couple and when she pulled up and got out of her car, there was um, a group of pigs, which was probably, I think they called it a sounder, is a group of pigs. Um, and they kind of knocked her over and actually ate her, which is really horrific and awful that that happened to this woman. But that story is very, very rare. Um, so just and something to be aware of, I guess, when you're in the Texas area and other areas of the South. Um, and they're also, most of them have become nocturnal, so they're going to be out more so at night. So when you hop out of the van to go take a tinkle, you should probably be aware of your surroundings. 
Well, this is our campsite. Uh, we are at Johnson Park, uh, which has like pavilions and bathrooms over there. Uh, apparently you can stay here for 48 hours. Um, a lot of garbage, unfortunately, but we are parked right here. Right on the lake. This is Lake Phantom Hill. Lake Hill. This is Lake Fort Phantom Hill. It's we're a very. Park. Yeah, we're at Johnson Park at Lake Fort Fan Phantom Hill. And uh, you can camp up to 48 hours here. It's kind of weird, it's, it seems very city parkish. But uh, we have some neighbors uh, from Quebec and uh, they looked a little lost when they pulled up here. So we were just like, yeah, just camp next to us. It's fine. So we're gonna enjoy sunset here and probably hit the hay. Probably gotta do a little bit of driving tomorrow. We might check out the actual fort, Phantom of the Hill. Uh, we'll see if... if uh, uh, I was gonna say the the waves are so cool. It uh, even though I don't ever want to go back home, it reminds me of home. Like reminds me of the sound. The sound of the sound. Puget Sound. We're from Washington State. In case you're new here. That park was absolutely awesome. Um, and I kind of washed my hair in the sink there. They had running water. That's crazy. <laughs> um, and it was nice to kind of thoroughly wash some dishes. Um, and we are one day closer to getting to my sister's house. Uh, she lives in uh, Dallas. One more sleep until we get there. So we're headed to try and find the Phantom Hill uh, site. Fort. Fort Phantom Hill site. Uh, Google's taking us on a wild goose chase, but we're kind of wrapping around the lake here. Um, that's the park we stayed at last night. You probably get a clearer view up here. Um, it was very nice. Uh, the bathroom was in need of some repairs, but it was fine. There's um, a lot of trash. There's a lot of trash on the beach, um, but overall, it was a great, quiet place to stay. There's a dock out that way. There's lots of covered picnic areas. There's a volleyball net. Um, yeah, and the camping was pretty decent. And plus, hearing the waves was really kind of cool and relaxing. We've seen some interesting uh, gate entrances here. It looks like this one's two oil rigs. We saw, pumps. Yeah. we saw one that was a giant spur. Yeah, it was a the, giant the, the golden spur, spur. And the spur thing was spinning. It was hilarious. We should have stopped. Yeah. Coming up on our left is the Fort Phantom Hill Cemetery. Looks like there's a chapel too. Oh, it's a church. Oh, and there's the cemetery. There's a lot of cemeteries in Texas. Like, I yeah. swear, like every mile. Host on the Clear Fork of the Brazos.
This uh, wagon had a wagon. That's kind of cool. Uh, you can see the springs where they would uh, have shock absorbers for the seats. Pretty cool. And imagine all the wounded soldiers that were cared for here. Some were saved, some did not make it. What a time that must have been. It's an old cannon. That is so neat. How many fires were in this fireplace? Like, just picture like drinking your morning coffee, like warming your hands. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I don't just imagine what this place looked like with uh, all these chimneys going at the same time. Where did they get all the wood to burn? <laughs> There's a cactus growing right at the top of this. Are they plowing in the commissary?
is uh, Hubbard Creek Reservoir. We're uh, spree camping. For up to a week. For up to a week. Uh, we're just gonna stay the night here, but kind of scoping it out. Like the back as well. Yeah. Not a bad little spot. Wow, what a spot. Yeah, look at that view. Beautiful. Looks like there's um, another cool spot up that way too. Yeah. Charlie's relaxing back at camp. You can see Opal up there. And I'm taking a little walk along the reservoir. Kind of explore the area. And you guys are coming along with me. Like the sun's starting to set, the pinks are coming in. It's gonna be beautiful. picked up this rock out of the gravel it's really heavy like it's some sort of metal I think not sure what it is Have to do some testing to it to see a little bit of red in there could be iron found a really nice swim swimming beach here Right, I just pulled this out of the ground right there and does this look like an artifact to you? This looks like chert. And it looks like it's been worked. Interesting. I'm taking it back to Charlie. Gosh, it fits real nice like this. It's like a little impression right there for your thumb. Oh, I'm curious.
Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we are on our last leg of the journey to my sister's house in Dallas. And uh, we're leaving this beautiful campsite. I hope you guys enjoyed the scenery here. It was absolutely gorgeous. Great spot to stay. If you're ever in Texas, in this part of Texas, definitely come here. It's free. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, it turns out that that tool that I found, that rock, uh, that I thought was probably a native artifact, it actually is. I've consulted an expert, and uh, yes, definitely looks like a scraper. Uh, so very cool. So very likely that hides were being scraped with it. Uh, it has a little bit of a depression, like it looks like it could have also been a netting stone as well, maybe a multi-purpose tool. Um, but the tribe in the area was the Comanche tribe. They were an equestrian nomad tribe, so meaning that they traveled around with horses. And they were very good hunters, um, Crazy cool stories about the Comanche tribes if you look it up. Um, so I'm very excited to have had the opportunity to find something so cool. Uh, yeah, pretty amazing. So I hope you like that. Uh, we'll see you down the road. We threw down some hard miles traveling through West Texas, and to save you the boredom of smelly oil fields and oceans of flat ground, we are going to skip to the good parts. The enormity of the Lone Star State makes finding its treasures a difficult task. But when you find them, boy golly, your heart might just leap into next Christmas. We're on our way to my sister's house in Plano, hot diggity dog, she had hot showers, a pool, hot tub, and a flushing toilet. During our visit, we didn't film much, but the adventures didn't stop. My sister took us down the old stockyard station to watch the Texas Longhorns being run down the city streets. These things were bigger than our van Opal and probably twice as mean. Can you believe those horns? The cowboy capped horses were just as beautiful of creatures as those bulls were. We were sure enjoying all the Texas hospitality as my sister and brother-in-law took us on a hike where we saw some huge vultures staring down at us from the treetops above. Then before we knew it, we started noticing fossils under tow. Turned out we were upon an ancient seabed that was once home to the now extinct Devil's Toenail. You can read all about them on today's blog post on our website, theadventurecloset.com. Check that out here after the show, but for now, let's roll this beautiful toenail footage. Finally, have you ever seen a cupcake vending machine? Well, now you have. Well, that was fun. That was so much fun. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon and we'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye now.